In this last part of the notebook, we'll walk through the process of using the lasso class in scikit-learn to do uh, L1 regularized or lasso regression. Um, just like with ridge regression, there's a lasso and a lasso CV. Uh, the lasso CV class uh, here um, will automatically run cross-validation for us to choose the best regularization hyperparameter. So here we'll go ahead and construct a lasso model, which will be a pipeline just as before with the ridge regression model replaced with the lasso CV model. Um, this will automatically do cross-validation and we'll set the number of cross-validation splits to three um, because otherwise it'll, it'll raise a warning that the latest version of scikit-learn is changing the number of cross-validation steps from three to five. So we'll just pick one, three happens to be a little bit faster. So we'll use uh, a cross-validation splits of three. We can now fit this pipeline uh, and we'll do that here. And we can compare with our earlier models. Cool, so uh, the lasso CV model actually ended up with a just slightly higher validation error um, and a slightly higher training error. So in this case, we actually got uh, a model that wasn't quite as good as our best ridge uh, regression model. Um, it's not much worse, but the lasso model, as we noted in the earlier part of this lecture, actually has a unique property that will also help us identify the most informative features. So I want to go look at those features now. All right, so actually what I first want to do is look at the parameters of these two models and, and in fact look at their distributions. So we look at the parameters of the lasso CV model uh, and I'm going to look at the parameters of the ridge uh, regression with, with cross-validation model. Um, so these are the, the coefficients, the parameters of each model. We'd expect that the lasso model is going to have a large number of parameters which have coefficient values of zero while the ridge regression model will have a large number of parameters with small coefficients or with small parameter values but not exactly zero. So let's take a look. And indeed we see that. So uh, this is the histogram of the parameter values. So the ridge model is a bit more spread out. The, most of the parameter values are, are concentrated around zero. The lasso model has a large number of, of parameters that are exactly at zero. So this big spike here, the models that are, are exactly at or very close to zero. Right, so the, this is lasso is allowing us to eliminate a large number of features from our model. And then we maintain a few that actually move pretty far away from, from zero. So what we can do now is take all of the features in our lasso model and identify those which had a, a non-zero coefficient. So the first thing we need to do is get the names of all the features. So the names are gonna be the quantitative features um, plus the list of names of the features constructed by the one-hot encoder of the origin, plus the names of the features created by the bag of words encoding stage. Now, both of these uh, featureization functions automatically generate names for their features, which is actually convenient and allow us to, to inspect these names in an interpretable way. So I'll create the array of names, um, and let's actually take a look at what they are. So these are the names of all the features. So we have the original quantitative features here up to model year. Then we have the output of the count vectorizer, or sorry, the, the one-hot encoder. And here we have the bag of words encoding of all the parts of the vehicle names. So things like civic were in a name. Um, I'm, I'm guessing these are model numbers here, uh, as well as things like deluxe, furry. I don't know what that means. Uh, in the, the description of the name of the vehicle. So now what we can do is we'll take all of the lasso coefficients or parameters that were close to zero. Uh, so these are the ones that we uh, dropped and we'll take all the ones that are not close to zero. And we're gonna go ahead and, and, and look at the names of those features that we decided to keep. And so interestingly, the features that we decided to keep were the cylinders, displacements, the displacement, the weight of the vehicle, it's acceleration, it's model year. So these all make a lot of sense in predicting the uh, miles per gallon. But also some of these terms like uh, whether or not the car was, uh, so this is the uh, origin of the vehicle. So if the car is made in the USA, that, that's an indicative of its miles per gallon, probably not in a good way. Um, also, if the, the vehicle had diesel or Ford in its name uh, or Honda or Volkswagen, these were all useful signal in estimating the miles per gallon of that vehicle. Right, so these are the, the features that were 
uh, that were kept after removing or shrinking all the remaining features to zero. All right, so that is the end of this notebook. So hopefully you got a, a sense of how to use regularization techniques to support models on a large number of features. And then by tuning the regularization parameter, we ensure that these models don't overfit, even though there's a large number of features that they can, can draw from.